I've been doing PvP for the last five years, and I've been building a library of PvP tutorials for the last two years. Now that all the groundwork is out of the way, we can start working on some theory videos, and I have one lined up for you today. If you're new to PvP, I highly recommend first checking out my playlist and catching up to speed. We're going to be talking a little bit more nuanced on some of the main topics that I usually cover, such as pip neutralizing, circle strafe, and just combat in general. With that being said, I hope you enjoy this video, and as always, make sure to check out the description for more details. Yeah, that alone is, is enough. And see, the reason I'm able to do that is because I'm keeping the pip close. The minute I let it separate like this, like now look at how much energy I need to bring it back to center. Right, so a lot of focusing on neutralization then. Yeah. And, and the thing is, when you're fighting other players, they're moving all the time too. So sometimes instead of me pushing away from you, I need to be pushing into you so that I can bring the pip back to where I want it, just a little bit off the ship. Because if here, go ahead and hold up strafe. If you up strafe and I down strafe here, we're just going to super separate. So my goal instead is go ahead up strafe again. I'm going to up strafe with you. And then I'm just going to modulate with maybe a little bit of boost to go past you or under you. And then if I just let go of strafe, I'm now going under you technically because you're going up. If I'm stationary here and I want to do those movements, I can just do this left, right, left, up, down. Like I don't have to do crazy rolls. It's still doable. The reason I roll is because using those sh bottom thrusters is much more powerful than me side strafing. So the goal in combat is not to separate the pip all the time like this, like this is bad because we're just creating space and it becomes a stalemate. What the goal in combat is to move the pip but then move it back in a different direction and always keeping it within like, I want to say like half an inch away from the ship. So like this is about half an inch. If it gets this far away, this is too far, because now for me to change direction takes a lot more energy. Whereas if I keep it just off your ship, like this is even less than half an inch, it's very easy to realign that pip. And then it's still, it's still close enough to your ship that it lets me close the gap when I want to close the gap. It, it's, it's a lot of muscle memory. You, like, you have to think about it. I don't have to think about it because I've been doing it for so long. But when you, when you understand the pip and you see it like moving up like this, then that's telling you right away, hey, I need to up strafe. The problem is a lot of people wait for it to gap in. Like some people wait for this and now I have to up strafe like crazy to get back to you. Whereas you should be reacting immediately. As soon as I see it going up, I need to be going up. So if you up strafe right away, right? First thing I should do, like if you were to go up strafe right now, mm -hmm first thing I should do is just immediately go off straight with you. If that's what you're trying to achieve. It's not always the answer, but it, sometimes, okay, like a good example of that, right? Let's say, go ahead and do that. Oh, up strafe. Now I can up strafe with you, but if I don't boost, you're going to win. So I'm just up strafing enough to stay near you. But if I want to be competitive, now I can boost into you and go harder and go around you. I got you. But if I took forever to catch that, so go ahead, up strafe. And now I start my up strafe, and now I start hitting the boost. Look how long it takes for me to get to you. It's almost nearly impossible. So you have to be like quick. As soon as you see it moving, you have to adjust. It's not, you're not always necessarily trying to hit neutral, which is dead on center, right? But you're trying to keep it close to their ship. So when they start to aim at you, you can now say, oh shit, I'm gonna shift this way. And then I'm gonna go back the other way. But like, even without the roll, it's not always needed. Like right here, I don't need it. But now if you start up strafing and I'm this way and you start side strafing and I side strafe, I need boost to keep up with you. So the most boost efficient route for me there would have been to roll so that I can match your up strafe with my up strafe. I need to remember two winters is I'm in decoupled, right? So if I, if I just fully break, right? I don't need to keep holding my inputs. I keep doing that. It depends again, it's relative. Sometimes you don't need to hold. Like, for example, if I'm coming to your right, I don't want to keep holding right. I just let go. But see, if I let go, I still keep drifting, which is not necessarily what I want. What people usually don't do is they don't counter push. So when I go right, I need to be ready to go left to stop my movement. Gotcha. Same if I go left, I got to be ready to hit right to stop my movement. That's where decouples nice. Like, I wouldn't want to go like too far into my Straight. Right, because look how far you get away. Yeah, so a little bit of forward strength as well. Correct. You add a little bit of forward if needed. 
and then you stop your momentum so that I stop right next to you and then left, right, right, left. It's all about mastering that control of your momentum. And it gets more complicated when you add more things like rolls and stuff. Like now you have to be accounting for which direction am I moving in when I'm rolling my ship like this. See, this comes with time and understanding momentum. Like right there, that was a right strafe. And then I left strafe to cancel it with forward. That comes with time. <laughs> You're not going to get that off the bat. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, dude. And one of the main factors that people overlook a lot of times is the pip is nice for this range. But when you're in close quarters, like, let me get right in front of you. Right here, forget the pip. I don't even need you locked. Like, you become my pip. I know that if I go right, look, my pip's going to the left. I need to go left to center it. And relative, meaning he's not moving, you're not moving, I'm not moving. This means the pip is neutralized. So I can still do those maneuvers, even without the pip. You just have to know where you're moving. If you were getting a knife fight range, it'd be perfectly fine for me to, assuming I can get the maneuver where someone's not, you know, like right on me the entire time. Mm -hmm. There'd be nothing wrong, uh, wrong with me backing up into like mid. No, there's not. A lot of people are like, oh, back strafing is bad. You shouldn't back strafe all the time. The thing is back strafing is very relative. There's, I don't like to think of it as back strafing. Um, there's either you're separating the fight or you're closing the fight. That's all there is. Knife fighters are constantly closing the fight. They don't dodge by creating distance. They dodge by closing. You're not always going to be better than someone in the close range fight. It's kind of like when three, when, when you have two boxers fighting, right? You have Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali, two of the most known fighters. Mike Tyson wants to get in tight. Muhammad Ali wants to keep the mid and long range. You're not going to tell Muhammad Ali he's back strafing all the time because he's keeping you in the mid and long range. That's just his style. And this game, bro, this game is jujitsu, man. Like you have three fighting styles and it's the fighters, it's whoever's engaged, you're, you need to find what's the weak point of that enemy and how to use it against him. You can't rely on like, hey, I'm a knife fighter. I want him to knife fight me all the time. No, if he's good at mid range, he's going to use mid range and you need to use whatever skill you have to find out how to stop him from doing it. There's three principles. There's uh, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Those are your three neutralization points. When I speak of neutralizing, I'm only concerned about X and Y because I don't want to overwhelm people, right? So right now I'm not neutral because my X axis is to the left. If I strafe to the right, now my X axis is right on top of your ship and we're neutral. That said, if we pay attention to the relative velocity right here on my screen, I'm moving at 8ms negative to you. So I need to add a little bit of forward strafe to now start approaching you. And then a, a neutral neutral would be me hitting absolute zero. Boom, this is neutral, which we're not moving at all. X and Y are matched and Z axis is matched. So probably best not to be in this specific, you know. Right, in this, in this zone, you're, yes. you're, and every shot is gonna land on you, bro. It's not where you wanna be. Here, what I was trying to show you is like, let's, let's do a neutral exercise. So if I go here, you neutralize. I won't even roll, I'll just do that. Yeah. I go this way. Good, this way. A little bit too much up, but you got the general direction. A little bit more down you need. There you go, that's neutral. So that's step one, right? Step two would be now you have to control your forward and back to stay close. So our goal is to neutralize, but also stay kind of within this range. Now at first it's gonna be very hard because you have to rely on using the, the vertical meter to show you how fast we're going back and forward away, but eventually you'll build a perception for distance based on just if the ship is getting smaller or larger so if i go right go right now see so you have to add a little bit of forward because you see how i'm pushing away here even though you're close to neutral which you're not neutral yet you got to go more left strafe i think there you go now you need a tiny bit of forward to come near me now a little bit of back so we don't slam see now i go left now match it you got to go a little bit right see how the pip disappears at this range this is, this is where you have to rely on the ship telling you what's going on. So if we see relative movement, you need to match till we're completely isolated. Go for it. See how you're, you're kind of moving in the same direction. So here, don't move anymore. So your pip is doing this. I'm gonna move to cause the same issue. So your pip is doing this. It's going up here, it's going left, it's going right, but you're kind of always going in this direction. So it's just causing more and more and more separation. So now I need all this energy to come back the other way. Use all your axes. You have left, right, up, and down. 
use every single one of them and navigate around the ship. You don't wanna just push to one direction on the ship. Let's go back center. Cause remember, if you downstrafe, since you're not using rolls yet, you need more downstrafe. Like if I wanna get under you, I need to go up and then way down. But see how slow that is? That's where maybe if I upstrafe here, I won't use boost cause it's powerful. But I know when I downstrafe, I'm gonna need that boost to get back the other way. See, so. It, Kind of what I was doing was just like mostly doing things like this. And like you said, it was not really working too well. Right there, you're doing good. Cause right now you went left, right, you went up. There's, there's change to it. You're not just going up. Before you were just going like this. You were going left, right, but you're still going up. Okay. For anybody who's mouse and keyboard decoupled, man. Cause you need to rely on those taps. You don't want to have to be holding keys down all the time. Rolls make it very hard for mouse and keyboard, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Cause you, you have to rely on tap rolls, so your precision is not as good as being on a joystick. But that's okay because you don't need crazy precision. Like I, I do really precise maneuvers, um, but in PVP it's not that crucial. As long as you're generally going in the right direction, either towards or away and controlling the direction, that's what matters. Should I be focusing on trying to neutralize you at the same time or just trying to stay? It's both. You have to do both. Sometimes you have to neutralize. Sometimes you have to separate. And sometimes you need boost. Sometimes you don't. And it's also quick taps of boost. Like I'll, I'll maybe shift this way, but now I'll do a quick tap just to get to the other side and let go of it. I never hold the boost. It's a waste. Because all it's doing is causing more separation than I want unless you're moving in that same direction and I need that boost to maintain on you, I don't use it. You gotta switch the power on boost when you need to. Like there's gonna be moments where I'll be in a fight and I'll sacrifice closing and doing damage for just creating distance. So I can use that distance to build up my boost and go back into the fight. So like when I'm approaching, if I stay up here and I try to approach you, so right now I'm holding forward strafe, but I'm also dodging, right? But I'm going left and right. You see how I never get closer to you? eventually I'll pass you and we'll merge and go away from each other. That's why it's important when I come towards you and I'm trying to get near you, this guy, the, my pip, I want to bring it back over the center of your ship and then maybe to the left of the ship. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm intersecting my point of travel, which means I'm coming closer to you little by little here, even though I'm zigzagging coming at you. Now you don't always want to zigzag like that because that just shows that, hey, I'm gonna go, he's gonna go left, he's gonna go right, I just gotta stay at the left the whole time and shoot at the left, because he's gonna come right back to the target. That's where you add these changes where like, hey, I might corkscrew a little bit as I approach, so that it's, you see how it's a very, very hard target to land on? Yeah. It is definitely a lot to start to take in, though, especially after being gone. No, this is a lot, dude. Like, I don't expect you to get this. I just want you to understand it, so you can little by little develop that skill. This isn't something just because you see it, you're gonna know it. It's kind of like, all right, now I gotta get my muscle memory to understand it. Definitely not it's a lot, it's very, it's a lot. It's not easy for anybody. It wouldn't be easy for me if I was new to this stuff. But that's why I tell people like, when you play bounty hunting in the game, like PVE, the AI is a perfect target to practice this on because they like to push in one direction. And all you need to learn is how to get neutral so that you can get close to the NPC and then you can start moving around the NPC. It doesn't have to be a pilot because pilots are, they're dynamic. They change on you. NPCs are a much more stagnant ability to practice on and let you build that muscle memory little by little. Keeping on target is, is part of like understanding. Like some people say the main common question is like, okay, if I maneuver like this all the time, how the hell am I supposed to aim at them, right? Well, a lot of that is understanding your movement. So like, if I go to the right, your pip's gonna go to the left. So instead of me going right and then aiming left, what I do is I aim left and then go right so that by the time I stop, boom, I'm lined up. Because yeah, I feel like that's the fundamental. Because if you teach circle straight first, which is what I used to do, what ends up happening is they rely too much on that and then they don't understand movement. Whereas this will teach you movement. You may not necessarily get as good at combat as you would if you just learned circle strafe, but it will make you a better pilot in the long run. Another thing too is like, um, Okay, like the 45 thing, right? Like they're not wrong. Like 45 is the most optimal thing. Like having them in this 45 degree where I get this 45 degree angle and I upstrafe into you. Yeah, that's the fastest way to get to somebody. 
but it's not always the best because if I'm at a 45 here and you know I'm on a 45, it's an easy line for you to follow. Whereas instead, I can just, instead of doing a 45, just go a 90 degree to the right and then go to the left. Like why 45 when I don't have to? Like one of my favorite things that I, I like teaching people is like, a lot of people are focused on bringing the gun to the player. So for example, if we're fighting, right? And all of a sudden you get to a position where you have me on your side like this. A lot of players get stuck in like, hey, let me start aiming at this guy because he's aiming at me. Whereas it's a lot better to sometimes just right here, all I need to do is right strafe. And I'm bringing your ship to my crosshair instead of bringing my crosshair to your ship. We aren't aircraft. Um, we don't rely on, on air to you know, change our direction. We can make our direction wherever we want it to. So it, it, the same applies yeah, to yeah. combat. You don't need to rely on having your nose on the target if you can just come in sideways and that puts your nose on the target. You can't learn too much at one point. You have to isolate things. So like if someone's yeah. bad at aiming, learn how to aim first. Then you can move on yeah. to like maneuvering and shit. Jeez, for example. Yeah. If honestly, man, if you cannot beat a VHRT in a light fighter, you have no business in arena commander. And I, I don't, I don't want to say that to like sound mean, right? Cause like, if you want to go into arena commander, no, go in. Yeah. Like if by all means, if you enjoy going in AC and, and like, fighting these guys that are really good go for it but like if you really want to learn you should be able to do vhrts in a life fighter first as always thanks to all the supporters who have stuck around and i'll catch you guys on the next one